one's life that are momentous and life-altering. Days when all of your life experiences are condensed into one decision. Today is that day for me. My wife Sandra, my family, and I invite you to join us on a great adventure, a quest to become elected the governor of the great state of Georgia. We continue our leadership series interviews tonight. We'll be joined on set by Representative Doug Collins, Governor Nathan Deal's floor leader. I'm now joined on set by two co-sponsors of Governor Deal's Hope Build from opposite sides of the aisle. House Minority Leader Stacey Abrams of Atlanta is here. Representative Abrams is a Democrat and Representative Doug Collins of Gainesville, a Republican. Representative Collins is Governor Deal's floor leader. Thank you both for being here. Yeah, I didn't Shortly after Nathan Deal took office as governor, fate smiled on Doug Collins again. Population growth in Georgia required that a new 14th U.S. House district would have to be carved out of the existing 13. New lines drawn to allow each new House district to represent approximately the same number of people. Here's the old map of Georgia U.S. congressional districts prior to 2012. Notice that Gainesville and Hall County, the area of Governor Deal's strongest support, are located in the far eastern portion of the district. Naturally, as one considers areas farther away geographically from Nathan Deal's hometown, the governor's base of support would subside. Not a problem. In August of 2011, the governor, Speaker Ralston, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, also a Gainesville native, would call a special session of the Georgia legislature, the purpose to carve out a new 14th district and reset the lines in all the old districts within a month. With Speaker Ralston and the governor's floor leader, Doug Collins, to shepherd the governor's proposal through the House, and with Casey Cagle to run it through the Senate, Gainesville and Hall County would now be situated in the very heart of the new 9th District, thus cementing the favor of any Gainesville politician seeking statewide or even federal office. Right on cue. Shortly thereafter, Doug would announce his intention to run for Congress in the 9th District, where there would be no incumbent to defeat. You see, another establishment politician, previous 9th District U.S. Representative Tom Graves, coincidentally decided to leave the 9th and stepped over to the newly created 14th District, which allowed both Collins and Graves to seek office where there would not be an incumbent. In short, things could not have worked out better for the two young aspiring career politicians, Tom Graves and Doug Collins. As an added advantage, now all three, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Speaker of the House, would call Georgia's 9th District their homes. The path to become elected to Georgia's 9th District seat would be arduous. The opening left by the departing Graves attracting the attention of two more congressional hopefuls, conservative talk show host Martha Zoller and late entry into the campaign educator Roger Fitzpatrick. Although Fitzpatrick was a late entry to the field of candidates, in the primary he attracted over 22,000 votes, forcing a runoff between Collins and Zoller. The runoff campaign between Collins and Zoller became contentious. It was during this time Doug Collins, funded mightily by the governor's network of corporate financial supporters, would employ a favorite tactic of the establishment, publishing half-truth allegations against his opponent, spending from a massive campaign war chest funded by the governor's network of private contributors, circulating those allegations widely and overwhelming his weaker financed opponent's ability to effectively respond. Governor Deal's establishment campaign consultant, one known as the Stone Ridge Group, created a mailer for Doug, sending it to all corners of the 9th District, questioning the position of the decidedly pro-life Zoller in the public mind. 
taking statements from her decade on the air as a talk show host and snippets from her book out of context, creating a case to the voters that Martha Zoller was really pro-choice in one of the most pro-life districts in the country. Here are two excerpts recorded at campaign forum stops leading up to the July 2012 runoff. you, but it's been getting a little hot outside in the last few days, and especially over the last week, the rhetoric in this race has gotten a little bit heated as well. In fact, Martha's even called me a liar. And the question I have, because we put up a website and part of a flyer that said seemarthasayit.com, in which we basically put our own statements and, and events from when her interviews are on air. The question that I have, Martha, for you is these reports were put up with no editorialized, they were just simply your statements. Is there any one of those statements, can you point to just one, that was not you saying? Well, I said it, but they were taken out of context, and they were misquotes, and they were not complete uh, transcripts of what I said. And yes, some of those things I said, but you took them out of context, and you know you took them out of context. And I stand by the support that I have gotten from organizations like Susan B. Anthony and Georgia Right to Life and the organizations that have looked at my record over the course of 15 years. You guys know me. I am the Tea Party conservative firebrand candidate, and I'm going to represent you in Congress. I just want to address a couple of things that Doug said. I mean, he, he implied that I was not pro-life. I am, I am pro-life. I do believe in an exception for life of the mother, but I have been endorsed by Susan B. Anthony List and Georgia Right to Life. And Georgia Right to Life reaffirmed their endorsement of me and said that I am uh, pro-life and that they have looked at my record. I also do not support civil unions. And uh, Sarah Palin and Rick Santorum and others do not support people who support civil unions. Uh, so I just wanted to clear that up. I'll be around to take any questions that you might have, and I certainly want to answer anything that's happening. Can we go? Can I, yes, sir. I, I just, you know, I, I need to address that since she brought it up. And it, I think that up, when, I brought, when I brought it up, she responded. <laughs> I want to make the response. Here it is. There is no, there, the record for Martha is what she said. And what she said about is she wanted to keep abortion legal. She said that even in this campaign during forums, and she's used the life of the mother exception to say that's why she wants to keep it legal. That's a pre Roe versus Wade argument. Before, even before Roe v. Wade, the life of the mother was always considered in these uh, times. That's a consideration that I just don't have. I don't want to see it uh, maintained being legal. I want to see it outlawed. And as far as civil unions, even our own campaign put out a comment that said after the marriage amendments passed, then I would not be concerned about what others would do with their private contracts. That's a civil union. That's why I said it. That's why we we document it. And that's why we back it up. And that's why I said it today. And I believe there is a true choice here. This is not an issue that you can look at. You can look at from what we said and how we go about it, but this is a conservative issue. I'm the conservative candidate that is running in this district.